What's up, y'all? I want to share something with you the Holy Spirit gave me in my quiet time and then also the scripture that he referenced for me to look up out of Nahum. But first, I'm going to share what the Holy Spirit shared. Um, first, what I saw is a loudspeaker. And what I heard the Holy Spirit saying to me is my people want a loudspeaker. That they like loud things, flashy things. We reference loud displays. He showed me uh, a specific individual on the Olympics, uh, on the opening ceremony, and how we celebrate these things. Um, but he is saying that um, I am humble. I came as a child, as a baby, a helpless baby in the lowest demographic. And yet my people, they celebrate these big fancy success. I have everything, right? That's what they look at. <clears throat> that's, what, that's what my people reverence. Yet... A baby, lowest demographic. I'm in the raindrops. I created everything. They don't even, they miss that. They don't even see me in that. And we don't notice it, but it's God. And so then what I began to see was a picture of somebody on a bed, like a deathbed basically, and someone's holding their hand. It was quiet. And I heard three words, sickness, darkness, silence. Then I heard my people will see me and will find me and will seek me. It is my grace that I silence the loudness and the noise, the hubbub. Some of you will think that I am not a good God because you never sought me before that moment of silence, darkness, uh, sickness. But it is my mercy. <clears throat> again, the same picture he shows me again. Someone ill on their deathbed, someone holding their hand. Okay? This is the moment of closeness that was needed. It is in this moment when the world holds still and time becomes valuable that you will find me. I will silence the noise of the world and some will worship me and some will be lost. And so, again, even the next day as I was praying, I just began to weep. And I began to weep because it's going to take some people losing someone that they love or seeing death around them for their heart to turn to God. And some will be lost just like on the deathbed. But some will worship. Some will turn to God. And some will turn away because of the tragedy. And so I just want to encourage uh, those of you who say that you love Christ, put in the time now, please, because he is a good God. And no matter what happens, we have an opportunity to worship because I also saw dark rooms, no lights, but people were gathered and they were still praying and they were still worshiping. And so um, we need to be in prayer for those um, <clears throat> who, who, will be, who could be lost, who are already lost, but will have another opportunity in the silence, another opportunity in the darkness, another opportunity with sickness, with death, whatever it is, to turn to God because that's his mercy and his grace for some. And so we just want to be in prayer about that. Now, uh, Nahum 3. I'm going to read out of the study Bible first. Uh, I'm going to read out of verse 4. All this because Nineveh sold herself to the enemies of God. The beautiful and faithless city, mistress of deadly charms, enticed the nations with her beauty and then taught them all to worship her false gods, bewitching people everywhere. No wonder I stand against you, says the Lord Almighty, and now all the earth will see your nakedness and shame, and I will cover you with filth and show the world how really vile you are. And all those who see you will shrink back in horror. Nineveh lies in utter ruin, yet no one anywhere regrets your fate. <clears throat> and I want you to pay attention to the words, okay? I'm going to go back uh, into the King James Version. I'm going to start at verse 5. Behold, I am against thee, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will discover thy skirts upon thy face, and I will show the nations thy nakedness and the kingdoms thy shame. And I will cast abominable filth upon thee, and I will make thee vile, and I will set thee as a gazing stock. I need you to pay attention to the references here, okay? We have the references of shame, of nakedness, your skirts upon your face. We have the word abo ab abomination, basically. And what does that make you think of when you read the Bible, right? Filth. We have vile gazing stock it's a visible appearance and so um this was from the other day but then again today when i was praying what the lord began to show me as well and he said to me is that people have made lifestyles out of their sin they have made communities they have made teachings they have made homes they have made families out of their sin and as his people, we have never been called to mix. We have never been called to do what culture does, but to come out of that. And <clears throat> if we could purge ourselves of the, of the sins that we've become accustomed to or that we've participated or intertwined with, it's, 
much better than the Lord having to purge us of those things because we didn't want to turn. And so I need you to hear me again. If you have made a lifestyle out of your sin, now whether that's being a thief or whether that is living um, something that God says that we are never to do, which is to be a woman with a woman or a man with a man. And, um, or, or even if, you know, if you've decided that God didn't make you right and he didn't know better. And so you decided you will be another, uh, you're going to be a man, even though you're a woman, vice versa, right? Guys, God is saying people have made a lifestyle out of sin. And I just began to weep. And all I could hear was, oh no, oh no. And it brought me to tears. And so this is not hate. This is not discrimination. What this is, is a plea because there are some things coming and God is not pleased with the people that love God, the people that don't love God, that's a whole nother ball game. But the people who love God, who have made a lifestyle out of your sin, stop today. Today, when you hear his voice, you better answer. You better repent of your sins because God will have mercy on his people. And woe to those who don't, don't listen.